Chat, what's up, man? YouTube, what is the word, man? Let me know if you're with me in the chat, man. If you're YouTube, please hit that like button. Please comment if you on SoundCloud. You already knew. Do the same thing. What's up, man? Hope y'all had a great week. Hope all y'all watched the man that popped off, man. Now, I told you. Now, I got some comments about that, you know, it was hard for people to follow along. You know I'm saying? Because I do communicate with the chat. So, I did overlay this chat. This is my Twitch chat. It is overlaid on my stream, so the YouTube videos, you guys can see this Twitch chat. You know what I'm saying? So when I communicate with the chat, y'all can follow along Twitter. Let me know if y'all like that. If it's something you want to add, it's something you guys can help you guys. You know, so when I start talking to the chat, YouTube can look back, okay, that's what he that's what he commented, or that's what he commented on. That's what he thought was good, man. So I wanted to overlay that. Make sure y'all guys are able to keep along, able to keep up with what I'm talking about. Because I need y'all help, man. Like, for real, I need y'all help to help me, uh, you know, talk about these topics, man. You guys are important. You know what I'm saying? You guys have as much say as I do. You know what I'm saying? So, for me, it's important that, you know, I want you guys to be in here and comment in the in in the the um in the chat on these topics that I talk about. You know, and uh, if you don't, like I said, Tuesday, 7 p.m., twitch.tv slash dub that we talk about Madden. We talk about competitive man, and we talk about other shit. Uh, we like to laugh, we like to have fun, and I appreciate all the support you guys have shown me because this is episode 54, and it is time to get into Madden, though. That is the one thing, Chad, I'll let you guys know this, man, is that we actually got Madden games to watch. Now, we don't have all the Madden games to watch, and we'll talk about that later with the, some of the streaming stuff, uh, some of the different uh, topics that came up, especially today when we learned a lot of the games won't be getting streamed. So that's cool. Um... And we'll talk about that. But uh, it is time to watch Madden. And, and the one thing about the club series, I will be honest with you guys, um, I hate the club series. I think it, it's killing MCS. Uh, but for me, as somebody that always sucks in the club series, always lose, it's hard for me to complain because it just makes it seem like, um, you know, like I'm a little like I'm a little salty. You know what I'm saying? If that makes any sense to y'all. So I don't really like complaining about it. But the one thing about the club series, it spreads out this tournament for like three months which is a little bit crazy. So every, and every week in salary cap, the game's a little different. You guys can agree with me. So it spreads it out for three, four months. This tournament, the biggest tournament is just spread out this long. You know, people can suck in one week and be good the next week, have a shitty month and then learn more about the game and be better the next month. They're playing this next person at the next game. Uh, yeah, club series. I, so for me, I don't, I don't like the club series. Um, but you know, like I said, I don't want to sound bitter as somebody that of all the tournaments, I get popped in club series. You know, two years I played in it, I got popped. I didn't even make the final four, didn't make any events. So I feel like complaining about it, I sound a little bitter. So I don't like complaining about it, but it is what it is. Regardless of the downsides and I'm something. Um, this is what else I was going to say. Um, is that the good side is that we're going to have man to talk about all year. You know what I'm saying? Every week, it's going to be a new club series. Every, you know, maybe two, three club series. Two great games to talk about. Three, four games to talk about. Whatever it may be, we're going to have man to talk about for the foreseeable future. Probably for 10 podcasts from now, this one count 10 more, we're going to have man games to talk about. Which is awesome. Uh, so it's a good thing. You know, uh, so that's the good thing. So, that being said, we did get to watch two club series finals. And I will tell you guys, uh, you guys can agree. I'm, I'm hoping, let me know, chat. did you watch both club series? Did you watch Arizona and did you watch the Houston Texans? Let me know in the chat if you did because they were completely different experiences. And uh, I, I will tell you why I thought the first thing, first of all, uh, one, one club series had our A1 broadcasters and Cole and Rico and actually had uh, Cecil Shorts who did pretty good. Arizona Club Series had Farrells who was pretty much just, all right, you go ahead and commentate. You know, you're just a body we have. Let's put you out there. And they had Ben Patrick because, first of all, why are, we, why are we on this subject? I'm perfectly cool with never having the NFL former NFL player commentate Madden. Now, I know this is like an elitist Madden comment, but for me, I... That shit does zero for me. In fact, I find myself telling telling myself, this guy has no idea what he's talking about more than anything. That's all I keep saying to myself. 
Yo, this real NFL player doesn't know shit. He doesn't know anything. And so that's all I, whenever there's a former NFL player, he is fucking stupid when it comes to Madden. But at the same time, Chet, at the same time, um, I understand how some kids might... Yeah, Cesar Shorts was cool. I mean, he was cool, but he was also with two really good guys. No, <clears throat> Bar Scott don't be knowing shit. He don't know nothing. No, none of these guys, they really... Do, they're good. Being good at commentating and knowing Madden is completely different, in my opinion. My, my biggest point in this is that I'm cool without them dudes. Because one, I promise you, they probably cost more than every other commentary that we have. But it, there's probably some studies that the casual fan wants to watch, such as this. Now, I'm going to be real. I'm a football fan. Right, chat? And I'll tell you this right now. I'm a football fan. There is no... If Cecil, Short, Cecil Shorts could be doing backflips on fire, I wouldn't give a shit. Ben Patrick could be doing... Now, all right. Now, hey, man. If we have Larry Fitzgerald up there, okay, yeah. Maybe yeah, may, I might watch Larry Fitzgerald. You said Greg Olson. I might watch Greg Olson. You know what I'm saying? I, I might watch, you know, if they have Andre Johnson. If they have uh, some superstar. Don't give me Ben Patrick and Cecil Shorts. Like, that shit means nothing to me, honestly. Am I lying? When I tell you guys that. Like, I, I, I couldn't give a shit about what this average-ass NFL player can say about Madden. Now, maybe a casual fan does, chat. Maybe they do. Now, but if it's, like you said, if it's Romo, if it's Larry Fitz, okay. Then now, maybe I'm a little more locked in. Maybe I'll give a shit about what they're saying. That's all I'm. That's all I'm saying. But all in all, in my opinion, I don't think they do a good job. All I'm saying. Uh, and sometimes it can be good because it's kind of what it does is it gives that. Maybe it gives an angle to where a casual football fan will watch Madden and ask a lot of questions. You know, and I feel like a lot of times you have to kind of explain to that guy like, all right, yeah, they don't really. Punt the ball, blah, blah, blah. And, and so it's kind of is, you know, a d d description of what a casual fan watching Madden would think. But ultimately, I'd be cool if we never had them dudes. Honestly, honestly, for me, uh, my big point is that, boom, I would be cool if we never saw another NFL player in a Madden commentary ever again. Do you guys agree or disagree? If they literally got rid of all NFL players on Madden commentary, I'd be cool. And it would be better. And like Clutch said in the chat, it'd be better off with a man player. You know what I'm saying? I'd be better off with a man player than an NFL player. Um, Share, that's a good point. If they didn't have a 99 and Mutt, I mean, listen, I don't want to hear it. But anyway, so my biggest thing with when I talk about this commentary, that was the first biggest difference in the broadcast. Because it was after the Cardinals broadcast, which was five yards in a, in a, in a cloud of dust. But that's the first thing you got to step to is that that's the big. You have Scott Cole who's really good, Rico who's good, and you asked us Cecil Shorts was good. Now I'll be real, Ben Patrick was cool. He wasn't bad. Farrell's wasn't bad. It's just it's just not the A one cast. So one, you already have a secondary broadcast team. Then you have, I mean, three. You talk about slobber knockers. When I talk about slobber knockers, that's what we saw in Arizona. That is what we saw, and and honestly. Volt played with well, the biggest news of uh, of this whole Arizona was Volt played without a quarterback. He had a 10 cap quarterback. Volt shot the Volt winning Arizona Club Series for the second time, I believe. Yes, he won it the first year they had it. Then T. Davis, then it's back to um, Volt. But he didn't play with a quarterback. He literally ran the ball every single play. Third and 13, third and seven. Uh, literally did not have a quarterback. And as we sit here and we think that. This guy just made the final 32 of the biggest tournament, $700,000 of his tournament, without a quarterback. Now, that's pretty much just like, boom. That's pretty, that's a bad look for Madden 20, you know, ultimately. But, um, shout out to Meadows in the chat, man. You already know. No quarterback. Like, that's, it's pretty nuts. Um, but the only way you do that is you have to have stellar defense. Now, if you don't, as me, when me, I competed in the club series, I probably spent... What did I spend? 135 cap on my quarterback. That's a lot of that's a lot of cap compared to somebody that spent 10. So you're talking about a man has 125 more cap because he doesn't have a quarterback. It's pretty nuts. So no, you're gonna have a great you're gonna have a great defense. Now if you're gonna play this way, you have to play you have to play the clock control and you have to manage the game. And uh, the only way you lose to something like this is if you don't score every time. 
you know, and, and K Mac, who obviously is one of our favorites, streamer, good kid, an offensive player, passed the ball. He had Andrew Luck. He wants to spread him out, throw the ball down the field. Uh, and he lost. And that's the main game I wanted to talk about. And I wanted to watch it, and I didn't realize that Volt really had the ball for like the whole fourth quarter, Chad. You know? Uh, that was pretty nuts. I didn't think that he would go out there and have the ball for the whole fourth quarter, but he did. You know, and uh, it, for me, it all comes back to me to just K Mac got what we fail to realize is that I, I believe both, I believe both players, I believe K Mac stopped Volt for sure. And I believe T Davis stopped Volt for sure as well. The thing is, man, with the game so short, I mean, you got to score every time, especially against a runner, it changes the game. And for K Mac to, to score, um, to not, whatchamacallit, to not score every time, it made it easy for Volt to play this way. Now, this is, um, as I, I gotta take, move this around a little bit. This is Volt, this is K-Mac's second possession chat. Now, you guys can, uh, you know what I'm saying? Now, my, for some, uh, my chat won't be on here now. Hold on, let me do this real quick. It won't take long, chat. I'm, I'm a professional, I'm a professional. Let's do this. Professional. Uh, do I not have this? All right, let me copy this. But let's talk about this is what I talk about when you um what you call it? Let me take this. Can I copy this? When you play a runner, man, you really gotta try your best to control the game. And when I uh when I talk about control the game, is you have to score every time. And we'll go back to this, which is definitely t this was vote after K Mac got a stop. I mean, you're thinking to yourself, K Mac's an offensive player, right, chat? That's what you're thinking. You know, he's going to be able to get it done. He's going to be able to move the ball. He's going to be able to pop. Uh, he's going to be able to, you know, score. And this is probably the one thing. Running inside zone is one of the reasons why I don't really like running that much. But what K-Mac does here is he goes ahead and runs a little inside zone. I don't want to hear Ben Patrick and Farrells. But he gets the second and eight. He runs the inside zone. Randy Moss doesn't block Ray Lewis. Boom. Tackled right there. He gets to a third down. So Volt has no offensive players. Like he literally has no offensive players. He just has a running back. He's going to run the ball. So the biggest thing, K Mac comes out here. Boom. And he gets one third and eight. Now, this is why I wanted to argue about. We're going to talk about Twitter for a long time because the shit's pissing me. Twitter's getting kind of obnoxious as far as um these guys complaining and stuff like that is going. But we'll get to that in another level. But he gets the one third and eight, right? He gets to a third and eight. It's just cover two. He has such good defensive players because he has no quarterback. Just rushes three. K-Mac probably hit that right there, but he doesn't. He tries to outrun him. Hits thick. Fumble. Boom. We got a fourth and 16. So when you when you pat, when you you run twice and then have to pass, you're going to get stopped that way, man. That's just and one play. We go from one play, as we see here, just cover two. You go over here, lurk here. Probably had his post here. But you send out five. You have a one-on-one -on -one here. I believe this is Lawrence Taylor, Clowney. I don't know who this is. But eventually, one of these dudes are going to shed. And you see, he thinks he can outrun this spy. He can't outrun the spy. Blah, say, blah. Boom. So my point is, when you get stopped, that gives... Or did we talk... The cameraman... Oh, this right here? Yes, this would piss me off. Skimbo brought up this guy sitting right... Like yeah, this is a little this is a little much, bro. And I, I thought I saw it at one point, right? At one point, I believe he was closer than this pause. Like, yeah, like I I, I mean I this would kinda I, I'd be like, bro. I don't know. I mean, I've probably been to a handful of live events. Uh, and Skimbo's in the chat. There's a couple I see Blocky in the chat. Like, and I ask you guys this, man. Is that do you guys remember? Like somebody getting this much closer than this, or I, I, I feel like with the other guys they had like a super zoom. Like if you got a zoom up shot, it was like it was like because the camera had a zoom feature. I don't think anybody ever got this close to me. I may be wrong. A lot of times you'll be so locked in you don't notice, but I do get this guy get a little bit closer. So you guys let me know. I don't. This would kind of throw me off a little bit, honestly. But I say all this to say. That K Mac, if you're gonna beat somebody that doesn't have a quarterback, um, I believe that 
you're going to have to score every time. And K-Mac did get stopped that one time. And then what we have here, K-Mac did score. Let me see. Did he have this ball the whole first half? Yeah. Was this K-Mac's drive took this whole third quarter? Did K-Mac's drive take the whole third quarter? I didn't know K. All right, so K-Mac gets the ball. Yeah, I, I, I mean, if how you can watch this game. I mean, Rags was bad. The fact that there was two drives in the second half, I don't know how you guys. I don't know how. All right, so what happens is K-Mac takes the whole third quarter, ties the game up. Then Volt gets the ball, boom. Then Volt gets the ball, takes the whole fourth quarter and kicks a field goal. Like, the biggest problem with this game and would help the game exponentially so much more is if they made this a, you know what I'm saying, they made this a 30-second play clock. It is the biggest fix they could make. And, chat, you guys can help me. Is there anybody that would be opposed to the 30-second play clock? And I want to know this as well. Has anybody said, damn, I wish there was a 40-second play clock? Has anybody ever said that in the last three, four years when it's been a 30-second play clock? Like, who, like, seriously. And I ask you guys that, who has made said, like, honestly, I just, like, for me, it's like, why, whoever, I, I, I would get rid of the runoff, but under two minutes, I think the runoff is cool. I liked I like that it's possible to play defense in under two minutes. I like that about Madden. You know what I mean, Chad? I like that under two minutes is cool. Um, and I feel like I feel like that definitely helps. You know, it helps playing defense under two minutes. But the rest of the game, no go back to the thirty second play clock, man. Uh maybe because they don't come out the huddle now. They wanted. I I I don't know why they did this shit. You know what I'm saying, Chad? I really don't. I really don't understand. But if you can watch a game like that, where one person was seven nothing, took a whole third quarter to score a touchdown, passing the ball, then come back and the next player take all, the next five minutes that easily running the ball and gets a field goal. That's what that combined with the run game being good is what makes the game. Ugh. Not as, I mean, we talk about skill gap this, skill gap that. That's a big deal. So I think the 30-second play clock, I think that's the biggest fix they can make. Um, I don't know who, I don't know where the decision was made to change the play clock, but it has greatly affected this game negatively. I don't think there's any argument to be made from any human being that the 40-second play clock is good. Now, you guys can talk and you guys can, it can tell me maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm right, whatever it may be, but I feel like there's no argument for the 40-second play clock. And that game, for for that game, they've had two possessions in the second half and five. I, I don't think there's been another game like that, honestly. Why? And Sodak says, I'm a fan of the 40-second play. Why are you a fan of why? Like, that's why I'm at, like, why would you be a fan of that? I don't see the argument. That's my, that's my question. What's the argument? No, I don't want six minutes. Stamina? I, honestly, uh, the thing with stamina is like if you're if you're conscious of the stamina and you're aware of it, I feel like it can it can definitely you have control over that. You know, ultimately, and 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 I, honestly, I'd be cool if stamina was. I don't. You can't take stamina out of the game, but I, I'd be cool if it was lowered a little bit. You know, I'd be cool. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I think we all would be cool if the stamina was lowered a little bit. Obviously, I think it would help the runners the most. But at the same time, it would help passers. Because now I can run the same post route over and over and be cool. You know? What about what about in, in, intuitive AI not adapting to the same play? Texan Hawk, you are in the wrong podcast, brother. I'm sorry, man. I appreciate your support. But you're talking about <laughs> intuitive AI adapting to the same play. You in the wrong spot, man. I appreciate you coming by. I don't know where you found this stream or this podcast, but we're not going to talk about adapting to the same play because over here we run the same play, and it's your job to stop it. You know what I'm saying? I, I never want six minutes. I, I have no problem. There was never a problem with this shit. Five minutes, 30 seconds was never a problem. Nobody ever complained about it.
You know what I'm saying, chat? Am I lying? Who complained about this shit? Nobody did. They just said, fuck it. We're going to, you know what I'm saying? That's what's a little bit nuts to me. You know what I'm saying? But anyway. I just, I, I just, I, I'm just, like I said, I just feel like it was no problem with it, chat. I really have no problem with it. Four minutes, 30 seconds was just leaderboard games. Yeah, I, I'm cool without the runoff. The only time I want runoff is, whatchamacallit, the only time I want runoff is under two minutes. I love runoff on under two minutes. It changes the way you play. You can play a little bit safer, you know, because of that. I think it's a big deal. No, four, four minutes was bad. Four minutes was bad, but that was only leaderboard games, honestly. The five minutes, 30 second play clock was always for like the last four years with MCS games. Now they changed it and we can have Volt running the fucking ball to get a field goal. He went he went 40 yards in five minutes. You know, and that, that, like that just adds to the game, honestly. I mean, we talk about fatigue and play clock is completely different goddamn things. And if you have to change the play clock to f help fatigue, then that, is that what we have to do? We can't just fix fatigue? We gotta change the play clock? We gotta make the game shorter to help fatigue? Is that the answer? Or cause these dickheads don't slow down and call a play, take a little bit of time? Mix up the play every once in a while? Have to drop down and run the ball every once in a while? We gotta make the game shorter? Cause of you assholes? Jesus. Yeah, I, yeah, to zoom in on the hands. Not a big fan. I guess it's art. I guess there's some art to video. We talk about the stream now, right now, chat. We talk. We did see Volt, Volt, Volt fingernails a little crusty, but you know, I mean, you, you, who knows what? I mean, I don't know what goes into fingernails. I feel like my fingernails are pretty cool. You know what I'm saying I like to keep them cut. You know, I like to keep them kind of cut. You know what I'm saying I, you know what I'm saying I'm just. Is that really necessary? Does anybody say? Does anybody say? Yo, um, I want to see their hands on the controller. That was kind of cool. When they showed T. Davis old ass, crusty ass looking controller, I was like, damn, that's an old ass, crusty ass controller. It's pretty cool. I don't need to see it over and over and over and over. Right, chat? I don't need to see their hands over and over and over. You know? Hey, Volt's fingers. Hey, little man. I see it. We ain't going here to kill Volt, man. Everybody kill. Volt is like. Volt is too easy a target for my creativity. You know? It's like, all right, dude. Plus, like, the Volt, Volt jokes are, like, they old jokes now. You know what I'm saying? The only old jokes I can make are Bugs jokes. Because they the same jokes, but they funny. Like, Volt jokes is just old. Like, yeah, it's just, just old. Plus, he don't really cap at nobody. So, I mean, you know, I don't. Yeah, like, yeah, like, Volt jokes. Like, okay, yeah, Volt, Volt. Volt got the problem haircut. You know what I'm saying? He chilling. But, you know, I, listen. I, I, them jokes too easy, honestly. Yeah, his nails was a little, they was a little trifling. But anyway, that was the club series. I, I think the biggest thing with that was just um, that the play clock, it was a, he was able to win with no quarterback. It's pretty nuts. It's pretty just what the game has become, um, what the game is. And, and I saw a lot, of, a lot of people on Twitter, specifically Mo and Joke. Mo and Joke, if you guys follow Mo, Serious Mo 1 on Twitter or Joke. Uh, I don't know how many E's are in Joke's name, but you go follow those guys on Twitter. Those guys are pretty much the um, two biggest man players to follow that complain about the game um, for me. But uh, they both said the run is that the run is not good. They won't be able to win without a quarterback. I mean, if you get stops, if you get stops and bust a couple runs, I mean, you can win without a quarterback. You know, it's all about getting stops, honestly. You know. Um, but we'll talk about Twitter in a little bit. But but they, they said you can't win without a quarterback. Vote won without a quarterback. We'll see if he continues to do that, if that's going to be his offense, how far it can make him. It's already made him some decent money. Win another game, make you decent money. Win an, eke out another game, win some decent money, you know. But uh, that was Arizona. They said it was boring. It wasn't bad. Now, listen. We spent years of the, the casual, oh, bunch versus bunch isn't good. I don't want to watch bunch versus bunch. Bunch versus bunch is bad for esports. Everybody has the answers. All everybody has the answers. Everybody's Alex Trebek. They all got the answers. Bunch versus bunch isn't good, but now we have everybody running a different scheme. Let's be honest here, chat. 
Everybody is running a different scheme for the most part. Now, obviously, some people in sing. Everybody, can we agree that everybody we watch play kind of runs a different scheme so far? We've seen four people play, or we've seen eight people play. All kind of run a different scheme. You know what I'm saying? So if everybody runs a different scheme, how can how can we go back? Where are the guys that said bunch versus bunch was bad for esports? Then we go, oh, the run is bad for esports. I honestly feel like nobody has an idea what's good for esports. You know what I'm saying? That's all that's how I feel. You know what I mean, chat? Like, nobody really knows. I I think what would you guys want to watch? And I asked you guys that, man. It's 300 people in the chat. You guys were in. It's all you guys on YouTube. I'm, I'm happy that you, these hour, two hour long podcasts get over a thousand views on YouTube. That, that, that means a lot that I could engage a thousand people for over an hour and a half. You know, what do y'all want to watch? Because you all watch, man, like seriously, what do you want to watch? What is fun? You know? You know, bunch for... Uh, Bunch versus bunch. Everybody, everybody got the answer. Ass man, one hot route. And, and, and let's 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 keep it real. Ultimately, players and man are gonna do what works. So, if you guys want variety, man, you got that's that's EA got to make a game that's able to have variety. You know, we're able to play with variety because the game is good. You know, if Bunch, Man 18, Bunch was the only shit you could really pass out. I tried. I thought it was my responsibility. I made a tweet. I said, if you guys don't follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash twitter.com slash the link is below and everything is below on Twitch, it's below on YouTube, it's everywhere. But I made a tweet. I said, it's not our responsibility. It's not our responsibility to care about, to grow esports. That's what I said. It's not my responsibility. You know what I'm saying, chat? Because Man 18, and Skimbo is in the chat. He will tell you. Man 18, ultimately, right? It's only 16 of us. Now, me, as a person, I, I put my life into Mad, and I said, okay, I want Man to be a career. How can I help grow Mad? Right? Man 18, as you guys know, 91 zone. Bunch, the halfback dig post route was pretty much the only the shit you could throw under a cover three zone. Only shit. Right? The only shit you could throw under a cover three zone. So it was pretty much the only passing formation you consistently pass out of, right? Now, I was like this to Skimbo, man, because we went to Minnesota and everything. Because I was like, man, I don't want to run bunch like everybody else. I feel like it's my responsibility to not be bunch first bunch. It would be better if I ran something else. So me, I'm like, I want to run tight offset. And I want to run it. I played against Problem. He boxed it. Not, Not to mention I couldn't stop fucking air truck and I got trucked to death. But I lost a problem that game, and I think it's the only time I ever lost a problem in my whole life online, special teams, in person, whatever. But I lost a problem, and that shit hurt my pride. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm not going to try to force something good just to help grow Madden. I'm not going to make myself, I'm not going to handicap myself to help grow Madden. You know, if, if there's only one good passing formation, I'm going to be in that. If this fullback dive works and gets five yards a time, I'm going to run that. Because ultimately, I got to look out for myself because. If I run something different, it's not going to, you know what I'm saying? It's not going to it's not going to help the game grow. If all of a sudden I start running something different, is it going to make more people watch? Because he's running some different formation? No, I don't think that's ever the answer. I don't think that's ever going to help the game grow. I think it's ultimately is EA's is EA's decisions to make the grand goal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me, so when I I say all that to say people are going to do what works. You know, people are going to do what works. So if the game looks the same, if both people are doing the same shit and trying to get the same results from the same stuff, then that's that's the game's fault. That's just how the game is, you know. And I will tell you, all these guys that the the, head, the, the best man players are they're nerds. You know, it that's what works. You know, you see joke, you see Mo and Kiv, Skimbo and Clef. These dudes are going to do what works, and they're going to try to find some shit that works. You know, they're going to search from pistol trips. To, to goddamn single back wing flex, to, to, to bunch, to five wide, they are going to find out what works. You know, so all you guys sitting at home and think, man, they should try something else. There's something else in the game. It's something else they could do. They don't got to run bunch first bunch. No, these guys have tried it all, and they've always found out this is what the best is. Now, part of the game is being the first to find what the best is, and that gives you a huge advantage, but they will always find what the best shit is. 
You know, so you guys sitting at home that you guys had run different formation or anything, it's not the best, dude. That's not the way to play the game. That's not the way to play the game at the best level. You know, so always remember that. You know, give these guys credit for defining the stuff, and that's really what's best in the game, honestly. But that was Arizona Club, and a lot of the talk been game, what is good for esports. Now, one one thing I always hate is all these people that aren't doing shit for man. They don't, they just sit, like, they always got all the answers. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, that was Arizona Club. I don't want to say boring. I feel like the games were short, not really any great plays. Uh, I'm not going to say it was bad to watch because I like Madden. I watched the hell out of it. I did. Um, I wish I would have saw K-Mac play a little bit more offense. I feel like he had two drives, the one where he punted that I showed you guys and the one where he scored a touchdown. I wish I would have saw him play more offense uh, against what Vault was doing on defense. I feel like Vault didn't even get a chance to really adjust or doing it. It was just... Game was gone today, here tomorrow, gone by. Game was over. But that brought us into the Texans Club. Texans Club, you guys say it was more entertaining. Um, it was, uh, and we knew what this matchup was going to be. Shout out to the Wraith God guy, Wrath God. And shout out to Chewbacca. Um, Chewbacca is a, a streamer, you know, a mutt guy. Uh, Chewbacca is actually a marketplace guy. When I first watched Chewbacca stream... Um, he was, like, buying cards and flipping them and selling them. And I said, holy shit, people really do this. I had no idea that people were... Shout out to you guys that buy cards and, you know what I'm saying, that buy cards, flip them, and try to get coins. Because I did not know people really do that shit. And they really do it. And that is who Chewbacca is. And for Chewbacca to grind and make a club series, that's awesome, man. And I think that inspires a lot of you guys to grind. And that ultimately is what's good about club series is that all you bazookas can make it. You know what I'm saying all the little Timmies with arm bar, all the little, all you guys can make it, man. So don't quit and put all like if you've seen Chewbacca, Chewbacca buys cards and then resells them to build up his coin binder, and he made a live event. It's possible you guys can make it. You know what I'm saying we knew this was going to happen, and I'll tell you this about Chewbacca, and I knew this. I knew that was a bad matchup for Chewbacca. Chewbacca would have been better off playing Joe Rice. He'd have got blown out, but it wouldn't have looked as bad. I, we all knew Mills. Us that know Mills and then know Chewbacca's a casual ass, we knew it was going to be bad. It was bad. You know, it was bad. Um, but I, 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 the biggest thing I take from this is that don't try it. Try. That's pretty much what it is. Try. It, it is way better to fail. And at the end of the day, he ain't failed. He got a check from EA. When you get a check from EA, you did pretty damn good. Simple as that. But it's always better to fail than to not try or to quit, period. And that's my biggest thing. I hate people that don't try. I hate people that quit. I hate that shit. People that fail, that's, I mean, that's going to happen to all of us. Everybody but one person in this tournament is going to fail. Going to fail. But, and you know, some people quit. Some people won't try. So, shout out to Chewbacca, man. That's a big deal for me. Uh, yeah, I, we knew that was going to be bad. But, uh, honestly, uh... The show was Mills versus Wesley. Um, Wesley, obviously, is my point guard on 2K. So, I was rooting for Wesley. I like Mills. Good guy. I I have never... I mean, I, I've ne Mills was not... From looking at Mills' play, is not impressive. It's not like, you know what I'm saying, somebody that throws the ball around, looks pretty, you know, feels like... Every time I watch Mills, I feel like, eh, not impressive. I lost to Mills, actually, in Man 17, and the Madden Championship. And he just ran. He just ran and ran and ran. He's just a... He is ugly on the field, but he gets it done. Wesley is Kiv's little brother. If you want to know what Kiv is running, you just saw it when Wesley played. Same thing. Um, but I want to talk about this game. And we can watch this game. Because uh, this was a good game. I haven't watched it back yet. But this was definitely a good game. And we go back to... um. We go back to all the things that uh, we talked about, so on and so forth. I'm going to make the chat a little bit smaller. I'm going to put it down here for YouTube. You guys see any of this? You know what I'm saying? As I bring the chat over here. Boom. So I can read. Okay. But the biggest thing for me in this game is, uh, you know, Mills is going to run the ball. You know, and... and, and What's crazy, and we'll talk about this real quick, right, chat? We'll talk about this. Wesley played the last game against Chewbacca, or against whoever, Rafe, or whoever the hell he played. Shout out to Rafe. And 
you saw he was going to run cover three cloud. That's what he's in right now is cover three cloud. You know, and 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 going into the game, uh, if you're Mills, you knew that, and you knew that simply because one. Uh, he watched Rafe play or when he played Rafe. They showed all Joe Rice's adjustments, which was pretty nuts. You know I'm saying, Chad, it was pretty nuts that they showed all his adjustments, all his play art. So you knew that. Now you go into that. Let me let's see. This is what I'm talking about. Now you knew that, right? You knew that 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 was what it was going to be. And this is the play you come out here and run streak, slant. Now I'll tell you, this play comes back to kill Joe Rice later. I'll tell you that much. Same adjustments. You know what I'm saying you get a couple yards. That's the play. That, that that's the play. You know what I'm saying that's the play you want to. Now I don't know if there's anything that in there a cover better cover three play, but that's the play he went to. No, it's gonna be cover three cloud. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so for me, maybe come out with a better play, but and and, and what's crazy and we did see and we comment me and uh, D Croft I believe or maybe it was J Wall one of these TNC dudes. Comment in that uh, Mills did have KJ Wright out here. Oh man, and this is that was a great job. Now I, it's just this play alone, Chad. I want to talk about because look, I want to talk about this play alone. Now, now Wesley has now it's so much I want to talk about in this play, right? Now Wesley has Palomalo. Now me, if I'm playing Jay Mills with this dude, I don't know what running if he knew what running back he had, right? I would have a better tackler at that guy, but he put all his faith in getting there with Palomalu. First play, he got clicked off, didn't get there. But he does a great job of not running right into the stiff arm. Like, that was a great job, Chet. And this is, first of all, he clicked off. It was just bad stick, and Palomalu got blocked. But he did a great job clicking off. And now it looked, it looks like, man, like he didn't stop him, but just making him put his arm out, making him slow down, making him, you know, give your guys time to catch up. You know what I'm saying, Chet? You know, because you know if you have Dion at the other safety, he's going to get punched in the face. You already know that. Like, he's going to get punched in the face. Mills, there he is in the chat. We talk about Mills' game. And also, the one other thing that I have not seen another player do, and it comes up pretty much on that play, was have these secure tacklers at outside linebacker, Chet. You know what I'm saying? Like... You know what I'm saying? So I've never I've seen people put it in middle linebacker, but to have it an outside linebacker, maybe for those, because sometimes when you run dive, the outside linebackers do come free, and maybe that pause, maybe that way they can get these warp tackles from secure tackler or outside linebacker. So that's obviously something that you know Joe Rice and Kevin them have thought is a good thing to do is put secure tacklers at outside linebacker just so they can get those type of tackle animations. Uh as we see here, this is just the same, the same run defense as boom. That's all it takes is one run. One run is all it takes. You can pound the ball all day, and when you go and play a runner, when you go play a runner, we'll see what Palomalu happens here. Joe Rice runs right into that guy. Boom, out of there. That's one thing about and one thing about having this safety down here like that. Right, Chet? Is that okay? Obviously, you got another person in the box, and we're talking about Dion here. Uh, he's gonna get washed up. And then he, where, where did Dion go? Now this, is, Jesus Christ. Like this is what I mean about. For me, I, I like, and I commented this on Twitter. If I'm playing a runner, forget these outside linebackers, dude. Give me Jabril Peppers right here, or give me, uh, give me somebody, give me Tillman, give me. Some, look at this play by Dion. Look at how bad that is. Like I'm not. Listen, I'm not saying that he should have like. Another player would do better, but that was just brutal with that safety do. You know, so for me, I definitely would not have both my outside linebackers a secure tackler. I would have two good tackling safeties. Now, not maybe not necessarily a secure tackler. When I played, I had Dawkins, full Dawkins, had no abilities, but he has like 86 tackler or something like that. Um, yeah, just a terrible job by Dion. Maybe pursuit. Obviously, he would have got stiff-armed anyway, but if he was in the gap and he got stiff-armed, maybe Palomalu can tackle him, uh, so on and so forth. But uh, just, I don't want to say bad run defense. Uh, it is some other things he could have did, you know, to make to make sure he didn't give up a touchdown right there. As we, 
As we get into Jay Mills, who runs this 4-6 bear, uh, everybody is in the box. Let's see what we got here. It is, what is it, a seven-man blitz. He has three people in coverage. And Wesley goes with the playmaker corner route. Boom, first play touchdown. Now that, Mills gave up a touchdown there. And, and the one thing it made him do the rest of the game it was put two deep zones out there. You know what I'm saying? He put two deep zones. And and as much as he got away from the blitz right there, Wesley, and that, that was pretty much the uh that was pretty much the whole game. Could he get away from the blitz? As much as he did, um, it's tough to live sending out two routes. It really is. Uh it, it's a a tough way to go and, and it makes it a lot easier for the defender to play, honestly. And um But I said it it, it, uh, it worked out for Wesley on that play because he was able to get the playmaker. He was able to go up, you know what I'm saying? Well, but, you know, I don't remember. The, honestly, I don't remember the last play of the first half for Wesley. It was definitely fluky. Once again, is that 10-cap Linval? Yeah, he's a dog. 10-cap Linval is an absolute dog. Uh, now, honestly, I, I would... Other than that run, pl that that one play, I don't think Wesley's playing terrible run defense. Uh, once again, he's all punched up, and we'll see what just stress to the left. That's what I mean. Like, what is that outside linebacker doing for? I gotta see these outside linebackers make plays, because obviously your safety got punched. Yeah, and obviously Telvin Smith made a play chasing him down, making that play. But I think he does that obviously without secure tackle. You guys, let me know. You know, so but for me, like I said, I would go into this game. I would go into this game with two secure tacklers rather than uh yeah, that's how I felt. I wouldn't I wouldn't have had Dion ever. Because Dion's not gonna make a tackle versus anybody. You know, and that one almost looked bad right there too. And one thing and Wesley you could see and he called a timeout. He called a timeout early in this game because he always wants Palomalo with this high safety because he has secure tackler. He's cool with Dion down there in the box, right? And a lot of times, and you'll see he wasted time out, and it worked out for him because he got a pick. I remember that specifically because these guys calling the game had no idea why he called time out. Uh, he called time out because he had Dion as the high safety and Palomalo in the box. He tried to flip it and messed up his alignment. The alignment was so bad, he called a timeout. I believe it's the next timeout, actually. No, because that's all these runners try to do. Let's not be real. Let's know what runners do. They try to flip, try to get some advantage, try to do something. As we see Wesley here in a little bit better, little bit better, safer run defense. Great job. Oh, see, look at that. Golly. But he did his best to go ahead and make sure that Palomalo did not get blocked. And he, he kind of did get blocked at the last second. But we'll just see. Just, just I, I honestly, I feel like this is just a bad team to go in against a runner like this. Just, I feel like it's a bad team. He called timeout here. Now, this one was a little nuts because he called timeout. If, if you look at the time, Jay Mills is letting this run. His hand's not even on the controller. But that's what I mean. I believe he called timeout here because, because, look, Deion's his high safety. He flipped it. He can't, he don't want to put Palomalo up here, have nobody over there, and his just alignment was so bad. But he called timeout. Probably would have ran a clock, but I guess you can't take that chance. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how to activate armbar. I don't armbar. You just press A. It's not it's not rocket science. But then he lurks the hell out of him. It's just a just And then he goes to the crib, actually. Oh no, I thought he went to the crib. That's my bad. Damn, I thought he went to the crib. Now I'm thinking, damn. Now when you get up. When you get up on a runner like this, it's like, damn, I feel, I'm feeling like, damn, this might be GG's. You know what I'm saying? But let's let's go ahead and just keep watching first down. He tries the same thing, but then he's saying put him in deep third. And this is the escape artist everybody bitched about outrunning Shazier. Yeah, really outran him right there. Yeah. You outrun players all the time. Yeah. This is this escape artist is so hell. It's unstoppable. Once again, here we go. Look, he's getting away. Uh, we're getting an ad. Shout out to EA for the ad. Are we serious? We gotta wait this thirty second ad. Now, honestly, let's let's watch it. Okay.
Okay. Okay. Oh, damn, I didn't even put the Y'all couldn't even hear it. Damn, y'all missed out. All right, so Wesley, once again, his, his escape artist got bagged again. We get to a third and nine. You know what I'm saying? He's going to run away. Uh, Jim Mills don't really know what he want to do. I'll keep doing the same thing. He's in a pinch. Blitzing everybody. He's going to put two deep blue zones. This is Madden 20 in a nutshell when you're passing the ball. Can you blitz again? Can you pass against all this? Run out here. He looks for the bomb, the moss. I, I don't know he throws it right at Apke. This is a shitty pass. You know, escape artists looked really dominant on that play. Apke takes one to the bottom. Let's, let's look how unstoppable escape artists looked on this play. Because I, I was told escape artists can just run away from everybody. I guess he could have. I mean, he just chucked some shit. Yeah, I guess he did get away. <laughs> he could have ran for 10 yards. Apke took him to the crib. I may, I, and part of me feels like if he just touched past it, maybe. I don't know. But Apke was, yeah, he bagged that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Compton is slacking. But anyway, he throws a pick six to Apke. So Mills is right back in control. Boom, pick six. We got a kickoff. Wesley looks. I'll tell you this, though, chat. Wesley is about another year away from having the exact Kiv haircut. Now, I don't know. Now, I really don't know. Now, he doesn't spy anybody. I really don't know what Wesley, why he's so far off from the Kiv haircut. I don't know what he got. Yep, there you go. Look, he's running away from the contains. There he is. I Honestly, chat, I really don't know. No, seriously. He's like, it's getting better. His hair is getting closer to the Kiv. But he's still, he's doing something wrong, dude. It's some type of part or some type of gel that he uses that's not the same as Kiv. You know, and I don't know exactly what it is, but he's getting close. It, uh, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying, Luca. It's, it, it doesn't, it feels like before he like he had like a buzz cut on the bottom and then he had the, the swoop. Now he got a little bit longer hair. To, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Hot Rod Master should be 100 cap. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, he ran away. Now, I even think... Now, you guys tell me on this. I think a lot of times these escape artists and... and over, why did this dickhead just dive? I feel like he about to catch him and he just dives. Like, the dive is the worst. Yeah, I feel like Kiv... Yeah, Kiv does a little bit more. Uh, Kiv got a little bit more going on as far as haircuts and all that. Yeah, the dive... Like, as much as we talk about escape artists, that's not the problem with the game. The game is, the problem is just the contains in general. They're just not good. They're never good in Madden. Now, good job by Jay Mills clicking on. Can't get, nah, you can't get away from Shazier. I, he, Jay, but he never, I ran, just dove. Shazier just dove like an idiot. Like, that's the problem. It's not escape artists. Escape artists is the, the same as any mobile quarterback in the past, honestly. It's just, it's just contains. Bro, they cannot get contains right in Madden. Like, see now, I just it's this look right here. Like, bro, like, what we got going on? Kid don't have all this wild ass part. Like, this part is fucking nuts. Like, this part is husky. This part is mean. But he's got, you know, we Wesley, we gotta put a little dye in there too, cause you got like the standard dirty ass light brown. Like, you just like no matter what you do to your hair, it just looks dirty. You know what I'm saying, Chad? Do you guys understand what I'm saying? Like, this color just looks, like, it just looks dirty. Like, we need to get a highlight or some shit to it, man. Like, get it darker or go lighter or something. It's just like the dirty brown color. There we go. Wesley getting a little bit smarter. Not He's still going with the Max Protect, but he's going with a little bit more basic plays, honestly. I'm watching the game, but, you know, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, we, like, yeah, and he went away from, he went away. And Wesley played pretty good. He went away from, I'm trying to throw a post, I'm trying to throw a touchdown every play. Went to, you know, I'm just going to put a drag in a post. You know what I'm saying? All right, man. If you, if, yo, if your hair is thinning, man, you just got to just cut it off, man. Initiated. We'll see if they let Bugs wear the do-rag. Now, I want to say, Drenny stole the headband swag from Mills. Drenny is Disney, so they'll never bring that up. You know, they'll always give Drenny the benefit of the doubt with the headband. Stay in the pocket. Nice dot. You know what I'm saying? Wesley went back to a little bit of just the dot show rather than I'm going for a touchdown every play. Underrated play right there. Kind of, you know. You know, let, let's just put that how it is, man. Journey, 
Journey definitely took the headband swag and ran with it as if it was his own, which was pretty nice. But and what and Wesley agreed to you that you know, a lot of uh, he definitely got better. Oh, Mills took that's just a stupid. I, I that's just people take, people take the dumbest fucking timeouts. Just the dump. I, I'm gonna tell you why this is a dumb timeout, dude. Why this is just I I, I don't know if it's the like oh so Mills calls timeout right. 2.04 on the clock. Now, if it's two minutes, Wesley for sure is probably going to run the ball on first down. But if you call timeout to save yourself four seconds, it I feel like it's the biggest waste of a timeout. You just saved four seconds. Also, by calling this timeout, you allow him to pass the ball because the clock's going to stop anyway. He can now risk an incompletion because you call timeout. So not only did you use one of your timeouts to only save four seconds, you allow him to go ahead and have the option to run or pass. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I, I feel like that's always a bad timeout. When, when your timeout only saves you four seconds, as Apke makes a huge play on Randy Moss. And what, uh, one thing I will tell you guys about Randy Moss um, is that as Randy Moss fought for Wesley, he did. He got a little bit more. And right there, he did not fight on Champ Bailey. got tackled. Yeah, he definitely got a little... Moss definitely got a little bit of a little bit of love down here in the box. He got love in the box. I mean, you don't want you don't want him to have an option to run or pass. That was a dumbass timeout. Now this is I feel like I feel like it's it's a tough call. Now uh, I believe Wesley does get the ball at half, but I feel like you you can risk going for to, going for a touchdown here. You know what I'm saying I, I feel like you can risk it because getting a touchdown is, is a big deal. You know what I'm saying, Chat. Now you guys talk to me if any of you guys would punt here. Any of you guys, Moss, I mean, that was just fluky looking. If anybody would kick there, if anybody would go for it, what you guys would do, let me know. You know what I'm saying? But I, he actually went for it. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, feel, I feel like there is a, uh, there. I mean, it's not a bad thing to, to kick. But right here, this is why 147 is not obnoxious. But the fact that the run game is high powered in these situations is nuts, man. Now, I, I don't think the run should be out of the game. I don't think it should be, you know, irrelevant. But I don't think in Madden that, that if we have a game where it's 144 and, you you know, you, you want to come out here and bust a run, that's pretty nuts. You know what I mean, Chad? I don't know if you guys agree, disagree. But for me, I, this just shows you where the game is, that we're in strong eye, running dives, just trying to bust a run. You know what I'm saying? But, and this is why I talk about I like the runoff. Because it does make it a lot harder to run this type of offense. And I feel like Wesley's all screwed up again with his defense. Because he only had one safety that could tackle. I feel like I feel like he doesn't want to be where he's at right now. I feel like this is mixed up. I feel like his safety's over here. He's got too many numbers over here and not enough down over here on the right. You know, and he... <laughs> I feel like he got caught with that a couple times in this game where he only has one safety that can play. Uh, he wanted that safety to be at the right spot every time. I feel like that definitely uh, messed up a lot of what he wanted to do on uh, on defense. As you see it here again, I feel like he's backed up again. He, his numbers on the right side are brutal. You know. We're well, also definitely passing again. Go ahead and get some yards. Get out of bounds. You know what I'm saying? Now that's why I said I would definitely go into a game with, with I, I would have I want two ta two safeties that can tackle. And now he's going a little more safety. Now he got two safeties high. We see the stretch again to the left, and we see he does a good job again, not getting stiff armed. We're gonna come back to that. Obviously, if you guys watch this game, we are gonna come back to Joe Rice doing a good job not getting stiff armed. Now I believe this is where uh Jay Mills cannot cannot um snap. Now, this happens to all of us, and these guys tell me all the time, man, press both triggers, hold the controller upside down, and it'll stop. But I have never got any of that dumb shit to work. Now, you guys can tell me, oh, if you hold both triggers, you hold left hit, left bumper, right bumper, you can snap them. Never works. You all just get stuck. And that sucks right now. Absolutely sucks because it kills this drive. He can't even run any play in the middle of the field now. Absolutely killed him. And there's nothing you can do about it. You know what I'm saying, chat? 
There's nothing you can do. Period. It just... And now I want to show you guys this. Now this is... Now we all know Shakobi and what Shakobi looks like, Chad, right? You guys know what Shakobi looks like. Shout out to my man Barely Gaming with the sub. But my point. This guy that's going to come on the screen, I don't know who the hell he is. But he is... If Shakobi ever meets a girl and gives up gaming, gets in shape, this guy is fucking Shakobi. All right? Right here. This guy is Shakobi. Who, who went to the gym and met a girl and gave up gaming. Right here. Tell me I'm fucking lying, chat. That is Shakobi who met a girl, gave up gaming, and got his life together. Tell me I'm lying. That is fucking Shakobi. Look at him. That is him. Am I, have I lied? And it happened instantly. And I wanted to put it on Twitter. I wanted to screenshot this fucking guy and put it on Twitter. But I said, you know, I'm going to wait, wait for the podcast. This is Shakobi. When he meet a girl, give up gaming, you know what I'm saying? Get on a bug's diet. That, am I lying, chat? That's all I'm saying. That looks just like Shakobi. Fit Shakobi might be the man. Yo, Fit Shakobi might really... And now Wesley did the worst defensive player of his life. Yeah. Just, I, I mean, you talk about how you lose to a runner. This is how you lose to a runner. As we see another ad. Twitch is big. I'm getting an ad break watching a video. It's pretty rough. I'm telling you, he look. Yeah, two ads. Is this what it looks like when I play ads for you? I should play my own ads during the podcast when they play ads. That way, at least I can get a little bit of the revenue. You know what I'm saying? No, you definitely don't. I don't think you... I, I, I want to accept the penalty. That's that's super crummy. He already screwed. He already he already super screwed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, maybe I don't think they had replays. This was a dog shit, bro. I want to know who. I, I hope this wasn't Nerd Street where <laughs> with the Houston Texans. But this is my point with this lurk, right? I thought he was. I mean, Wesley. This guy sure looks fucking manned up, doesn't he? Doesn't RB look manned up? Even if he catches that slant, what's he doing, dude? He's getting tackled and the game is over. Or the half is over. Jesus Christ. But yeah, that was a bad that was a bad lurk. I did not I do not remember this play. That we're gonna see with Wesley actually scoring here. I did not remember this. Now I, I would be in three deep, personally. Dub dot W. I would be in three deep. He has twelve seconds and no timeouts. You know, me me personally. I don't know what you guys would be in. It looks like uh, Mills is in... Oh, he's in cover four. This would probably be the last defense I would pick. Oh, damn. Okay, he got a little closer there. Okay. Now, I did not see this. No, no, Journey. That was not worse than Bugs versus Joke. Stop it. Cover four quite possibly could be the worst defense you could pick. Now, obviously, he mauls two people, I think. But this is the worst. I mean, dude. Yeah, Vic got that out of here. Oh, yeah, great user there by J. Mills. <laughs> All right. All right. Now, we talk about... <laughs> what? My man hit strafe. My man hit strafe. I mean, it really wasn't bad because he had one option, and he just ran with him and... You gotta strafe up, boys. <laughs> Use that left trigger. Pretty nuts right there. Uh, like I said, the one thing um, about... They didn't have replays. I think replays are really damn cool. Uh, oh, let's go back. I, I want to see where the hell did his, his little lurk go that was chasing him. He's on Telvin Smith. Tell, if this real Telvin Smith, he got enough... What did he do? Oh, he went down to get he went down to get the comeback route. Look, like bro, like I love laughing at y'all, man. It's so much easier laughing at y'all than playing. But man, you can't let can't let Andrew Luck know this comeback route. <laughs> like what the fuck? Oh man, that's two bad defensive plays, really. Nah, that's just two bad defensive plays. Really. But I, I I do think replays replay for me per, replays are awesome. I think the game's way better when we have replays. So now Wesley's going to double dip the chip, I believe. 
Uh, Mills is all fucked up this play. Look, he got everybody. Yeah, he went back to this. This was a little bit better for him, but yep, that's escape art. Escape artist is unstoppable. Escape artist, man. Escape artist should be a take it out, fix it, get it out of the game. We can't run away. He can run away from everybody. That's what I heard. And a lot of times we talk about that play. We talk about that play, right? Um. Uh, with with Jay Mills about coming down lurking for the comeback route. Sometimes even in plays like that, man, you're just man instinct just kind of takes over, like doing shit you've done the whole game. And we got Denzel Ward blitzing. We got KJ right out here. Ooh. Damn, that would that would have been big time right there. Now Wesley had some stuff. He had, he could have hit that little baby drag. Definitely, I watched this whole game live. I watched everything. I watch it, dude. I watched the shit out of man. Playwright definitely helps with your user, bro. They see what's going on. Uh, I, I thought. All right, here we go again. I feel like Wesley's team is is the wrong way. Maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like his his defense is the wrong way. I feel like he has an extra guy on the left. Uh, and I would want that extra guy on the right. Maybe I'm wrong. But I feel like his number's on the right side. Or maybe it's not bad. Mills with the play art god right here. Nice possession catch. Nice baby die. That's the one thing about this compared to um, Vault. We talked about Vault. Jake Mills clicked up enough dots to keep this really respectable. You know, and we all know this formation has enough dots to where you got to kind of respect the dots. Ooh, there we go. Bar making a play. We get to a fourth and one. Yeah, Mills Mills was blitzing Dunzo. He didn't even know to do like his player adjustments. He probably had a 10 cap out there at safety. You know what I'm saying? And here we go. Oh, that was close. That was close to the... Uh, he got blacked at the last second. I mean, he. I think Jim Brown still would have fell forward. Maybe not. But uh, that was definitely um, definitely a big big play that could have got stopped, honestly. But here we go with the 40-second play clock. Like, I feel like he he's not even really trying to super milk. Well, he's trying to milk, but it just makes this game so much shorter than it needs to be, man. We're going to just fast forward a little bit. Second and eight. We can fast forward. Oh, he scored a touchdown? Never mind. Ah, this was a big play in the game, chat. This was a big... And we see Brandon Wilson again in man coverage. Wesley had the shittiest secondary you could have, man. Like, God. Not that a good safety is really going to stop that. Honestly, I don't even think that corner route is really that good against man coverage. It's not the sharp corner route. It's a little bit deeper corner route. But he just killed... I mean, Brandon Wilson can't cover anybody. You know? So that was a big play because it really kind of makes you afraid to play man coverage, if that makes sense. You really can't leave them dudes on an island. I, honestly, yeah, but I he has shitty uh, – looking at this game, he's got shitty defenders for sure. But I, I would have – the linebackers aren't – I don't know what the linebackers, outside linebackers, secure tackle are doing. I think if Wesley has Jabril Peppers instead of Deion Sanders – uh, if he tanks another outside linebacker as he gets the edge again, pick up uh, pick up a cool 15, 20 yards. I feel like if he had two good safeties rather than these outside linebackers or, you know, whatever linebackers he chose to have, I think he would have been better off. That, that's the only thing I, I – now, that play, he's not going to have, you know, Jalen Ramsey out there because it's just too much cap. But uh, definitely would have had – Vic definitely has built-in dashing that I – Ooh, I, I, I kind of credit Wesley for this play. And I remember watching this play. I probably would have threw that post here. Pass lead up right at the middle. Boom, right there. But it, I believe it was covered to invert, and I probably would have threw a pick. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I believe that's Jay Mills' homie. You know I'm saying? like So he was rooting for Jay Mills and shit. 
Yeah, yeah, but it was covered two invert. It didn't. It looked like it was just good. Good dot right there. It didn't look like it. it looked like it was just covered three at first, and he was uh he just fucked up. But it was covered two invert. Yeah, for sure. But that's why. That's why I would have. I, when I first saw that play develop, I would have do it. You know what I'm saying I was oh shit, he got him. But then it was covered two invert. He backed up. I was a good job not throwing that play. Yeah, that's why it was a good job not throwing that. But like I'm saying I, I would. I me my dumb ass when I saw that right away, I definitely would have do that. Probably would have do that too. <laughs> I'm saying on these plays, KJ Wright's kind of hell, man. Now I want to see Mills come out here and make a play with KJ Wright. I think Mills. I, I don't like. I don't know. And Mills is in the chat. What is the decision to go to one four six? I feel like I don't want to say you bagging him. I I feel like this is where he just try to play a little bit safer defense. Like he try to make him use a little bit of time. That way, even if he does score a touchdown, Mills can easily milk out the fourth quarter. But I think he's just going to a safe, just playing safe right here. And I don't mind that at all. You know, his zones are all over the place. Good dot by Wesley. Soft squad just killed Mills right there. Mills is all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was just getting, just playing a little safer. You know what I'm saying? That's all. And, and... You know, I. Yeah, because it wasn't really that good of a one four six. It was just pretty much I'm playing cover two one four. It's kind of how I play one four six. Like, yeah, we're just playing cover two. And Wesley, yeah, he'll do a good job against it, but he didn't give up a big play. You get and and, and the one thing about playing these guys with Rand, I wouldn't be mad getting them down here. This is the guts of the game, and my man Jay Mills taught me build your line. Now I hope he built his line with this team. You know what I'm saying now he has arm bar and escape artist. So I don't know if he has enough cap to build his line. But I God damn, these ads on videos is nuts. J Mills always taught us build your line. So I'm assuming he's gonna be able to hold hold the door down here. Cause he built his line. You know what I'm saying? Once he built the line, he's gonna be able to hold the door. So you're not mad, especially with these bunch guys that don't have a running back. You know, they this Randy Moss, and that's why I was surprised so much how much Randy Moss actually did fight. You know what I'm saying? Randy Moss actually fought for uh, Wesley. Um, and for So you go to this. So you're not mad. I'm not mad that you know, you're know you in I-form with Randy Moss right here. You know what I'm saying? I'm not mad about that. I'm happy as a defensive player because I know he's not really going to fight. You know what I'm saying? But you got to give him the ball. You got to give him the chance. The way the run game works, man, Randy Moss is going to fight. As we see Dion and Dion coming in there tackling him along with, uh, I believe that's Denzel Ward. You know what I'm saying? So, and now you get to a fourth, you get to a third, and you know what I'm saying? You get to a third and goal from the four, I believe. It's tough to pass. It's tough to pass, but it's also tough to run here with no running back. You know, so, and, and Wesley can't kick a field goal here. Uh, pretty impossible to kick a field goal. I mean, I don't know if it's impossible, but it would have to be like fourth and goal from the 20 for me to kick a field goal. You know, so he knows he's got two chances to run here. Randy Moss fought like that right there. It's almost, and when you guys played the game, it's almost like the extra guys coming in the pile push them right back in the pocket, push him into the end zone. Like he's got him right here. He's not going to get in. And here comes 53's dumbass, pushes him right into the end zone. And he just got the, but that was the second time that Randy Moss kind of fought. You know what I'm saying? So, now Jay Mills gets the ball. You know what I'm saying? We get to see the Jim Brown. Ooh, that was... Ooh, and does go to the crib. Take it to the Baja. Now, this was almost... And we go back to this run. And we get to this run, a stretch to the right. I talked about... Yeah, I feel like Wesley's defense is backwards to the right. He has too many people on the left, not enough on the right. It didn't really cost him right there. Uh, yeah, Anthony Barr just shit that. That was brutal. I feel like he had it covered up pretty good. Anthony Barr shit the bed. Yeah, Anthony Barr. Uh, Anthony Barr. I, I I would tell you, going into this game, these outside line, but, and, and dumbass Jay Mills almost did the dab and almost did the, did the, the scheming joint. Yeah, so that was a big play, and that's all you need. That's why they run the ball, man. You just want to need your one big play, two big plays. But Wesley get the ball back. Plenty of time. 
And that's why I'm like, damn. I, I told Wes, man, the game gave you every chance, every opportunity to, um, every opportunity to, uh, to quit, but he kept fighting. He got sacked there. Boom. Big play by Wesley there. Hitting the corner round cover two. Now Mills going back to playing safe. I would definitely, I would be the same way. I'd be playing safe the whole game. And this is where the runoff is good, man. It makes it tough to go score with two minutes. As he definitely ran with luck there. Definitely got hit, but it's cool. He got up out of that. KJ right user is crazy. Ooh, that happens to me all the time. I want to fight every player on my line when that happens. You got a clear lane to go get you 10 yards, and here come fat-ass guard. I want to block the air, but he just stands in your way. Nothing worse than that, dude, really. You guys have done it. He puts a spy now, really not rushing it. Exactly how I would play defense, the same exact way. I would say, go ahead and beat me. That's what I would say. You know what I'm saying? I, w I would make him throw in the knee. Make him run with the quarterback. Almost came back there with alert. KJ Wright, oh, that was Tony Smith. KJ Wright a little bit too slow. See another play here. That's fine. You know, you're not mad at none of this. Now, Wesley has to use a timeout. Okay. Nice play, I guess. All right, I guess he got sacked or something. His clock is still running. He only has two timeouts. Big laser right there. Deep attack. Uh, Wesley called a timeout. Uh, I guess you got to call a timeout there. Right? I'm thinking about, damn, I wish Wesley scored. I wish Wesley, <laughs> I wish he scored with no time on the clock. And maybe he could have prevented that by waiting a little bit to call a timeout there. You know, but if you're going to run, if you have a plan of running it all down here, you got to call the timeout right away. He does. And Randy Moss fought again from the three-yard line. You know? If you're going to run right there, yeah. If you're going to, because then you can no huddle run. Because if he gets tackled here, he can no huddle run again, use his timeout, have two pass plays, really. So, yeah, you got to call time. You got to try to preserve as much time as possible down there. Uh, but hindsight, he almost <laughs> probably wished that uh, he, didn't, <laughs> he didn't get in that easily. But Moss fought. Moss fought three times here for Wesley. And then we do the kickoff. Bang. Bro, there is 22 seconds left in the game. Now, in this situation, Mills doesn't have to score. He can go to overtime. So the run is not that big a deal. You know, uh, it's not him running is not like stupid. Like if he had if he was down and he was running, I, I the man would suck. But he's losing and, and he goes with a stretch. And Wesley does a good job that play. You know? The difference between this play and the next play, I I, I won't know. You know, I really don't know the difference between the next play. It looks the same. It just, he got blocked. And, oh, he tried. But we talked about it all game, about Wesley doing a good job of not getting, not getting stiff-armed. You know? And he, and this time he definitely got clicked on. Yeah. Damn, that, that was rough. I don't know what could have done different. Uh, obviously, his user, he could have, but he just assumed he wasn't going to get blocked. But he did get blocked. Boom. At time, he definitely got stiff armed. But that's why I say. Uh, now I, I have no problem with this. I, I have no problem. Uh, I have no problem with Jim Brown stiff arming a twenty-two cap safety. I don't know what this dude Jim Brown costs a hundred cap. If he can't stiff arm a twenty cap, I mean, gee, there's nothing wrong with this game, really. That ha I have no problem with that. That's why I played this game, man. And, and I ask you guys, what did those outside linebackers do this game for Wesley? What did them outside line? He had Telvin Smith, who with with secure tackler is um, 39 cap. I don't know. He had Anthony Barr, same. Both 39 cap, right? I feel like you could have knocked them down to 20 cappers, and as Mills makes his field goal and wins the game, I feel like Chet, you guys could have you guys could have knocked them down to 20 cappers, or you got and then had Jabril, Jabril Peppers back there, honestly. You know, I, I, I just, 
it would have been a better defense. And and a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys, and, and Chad, I'll tell you guys, a lot of these guys, um, their defense is really, uh, they want to get that user free. They want to use that guy to get into the box, or they want to use that guy to make a tackle. They want to make sure he's the one making a tackle. But there's situations where, man, sometimes that other safety's wanting to make a tackle. We saw Dion give up a touchdown just being a dumbass, and we saw that last game winning one right there, man. Uh, if we actually saw three running touchdowns, right? Now, Wesley gave up two passing touchdowns. Wesley gave up a lot of big plays. One thing about playing a runner, man, you can't give up a big play. Uh, one touchdown run was Dion being a dickhead. Dion is safety, just taking the wrong gap and leaving a giant hole. And uh, Palmalu getting blocked, right? Oh, that strong eye, the first one. Second one running, he just bumped it. <laughs> he just bumped Anthony Barr shit the bed, and it was just kind of an unlucky one. The last one, I mean, Brandon Wilson was the last line of defense. Now, I come to you guys tell you, and I ask you guys this with Secure Tackler, right? It works. It works good. Six cat for real. Yeah, like, and that's why, but when I look at it, and I ask you guys this chat, YouTube, I'm asking you too. What happens when you break a linebacker's tackle? What happens if you stiff arm a linebacker, chat? You break a tackle. Now, the game sucks. Because you could stiff arm him. You could take that linebacker, grab him by the neck, and knock out every other defender. It's happened. I've seen it. Yes. And then the other defenders come tripping over him. Yes, it happens. Oh, yeah. Dion's pursuit was terrible. But Dion doesn't have good pursuit. That's why I go back to we talk about I, I would have had two safeties. At least one. Not even with secure tackle. At least a good safety. But my biggest thing is what happens when you break a linebacker's tackle? And what happens when you break a safety's tackle? A safety is a safety for a reason. He is the last line of defense. If I'm playing arm bar mills, I, my last line of defense, I better make sure I can tackle this asshole. Right, chat? That's how I feel. So for me, if, I, if I'm if i out here, oh, arm bar, I, I have no problem with arm bar. We talked about this from the beginning of the game, from, the, from like the first podcast. I've had Mo in here talking about arm bar. I, I really have no problem with it. It costs a lot of cap. It does its job. There's an easy counter to it. Now, this is how I feel about salary cap. If I want to have 11 abilities, let me have 11 abilities. Because they caught, they, they damage my team. Right, chat? They hurt my team. If I'm gonna have if I'm gonna have all four of my linebackers secure, all four of my DBs secure, that costs me a lot. My offense is gonna suck. But that's my choice, you know. Uh you know, I, I I don't know. My biggest point, I say all this to say, I would have had Jabril Peppers, secure tackler, Palomalu, secure tackler, and my, my outside linebackers wouldn't have been that good. So if you guys are still in club, God bless you. There's 128 man players that are better than me. I would probably get secure tackle on both my safeties. Even if your defense, which obviously Wesley's defense was not dependent on both safeties making tackles, there's going to be plays in a game where your safeties are going to have to make plays and um yeah i yeah the D croft says and you guys can read the chat now but he says they speed burst when you know you're right i saw saquon bark no i saw adrian peterson adrian peterson versus the bills this weekend he stiff armed the shit out of the dude like he like broke the tackle then he grabbed the dude by the face and just put him in the uh, put him in the ground but he didn't get a speed burst he had to regain his he had to regain his steps you know what I'm saying? He had to regain his steps and start running again. You are right. When they get that stiff arm, they hoo, hoo, they just be out. You know, it's pretty nuts. But uh, that, the, the arm bar is the least of the game being bad. But I, I, I'll tell you that. I bet Wesley, at the end of the day, if he had um, if he had a choice, I, I, I would Jabril Peppers. Jabril Peppers instead of Dion would have been better for Mills, honestly. That's what uh that, that that's what I would have did with my lineup if I'm facing these dudes that run honestly. Well, that was the text. You guys said it was more entertaining. Was a good game, you know. Uh, was fun to watch for me. You know, but I, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I made a comment after that game. I said, I said, listen to this. I said, <clears throat> that game was great. If, and you guys can talk to me. If 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 Madden can't grow from that game, what the hell? What else could they? What else can we do as players? If that game was not entertaining, where are we gonna have entertainment? 
You know what I'm saying? There was I yeah, but even that's what I said. I saw two touchdowns that Deion Sanders and bad safeties gave up that game. Not just the one. I I would I would always have good safeties. No, I honestly I didn't I don't know who did the this is what happens, right? These teams, this is what they do, right? These teams that this is what EA does. They come to the teams as we get we'll get to the stream. We're gonna talk about the streams now, Chad, as you guys are here. Go to the play arts situation and everything. We'll talk about streaming. This this what this this topic should just be called streaming. But this is what EA does. This is why they love the club series. Or this is what they try to pitch, right? We're EA, we're doing an event. Let me go talk to the Philadelphia Eagles, right? We're gonna talk to the Philadelphia Eagles. Yo, Philadelphia, man, what's up, man? We're doing this man club series, right? And we want to do these events, right? We want to do these big broadcasts. We want to pay these people to come in and bring their equipment, bring their people, and put on this production, this show that me and you watch, right? Right? That's what they do. They say, they say Houston Texans, let's do this. Okay, these events cost 40 grand, 30 grand, 50 grand. Last year, Pittsburgh Club Series was 60 grand. 60 grand. Right? Now, what EA says is, hey, Houston, Texas, we want you to pay that bill. You know what I'm saying? Because, I'm, let's be honest with you here. That's part of the reason why, that is part of the reason why we're not getting streams of the top four. We're not getting problem first round game tomorrow. We might not get to see problem play because EA doesn't want to pay for them extra, what is it? It's 13 clubs that's not streamed. 13 times two is what, 26 extra games. You know what I'm saying? Because it costs money to put on these productions, which they should. I mean, these people need to get paid. People are doing a good job for the most part. It should, we, nit, we nitpick a bunch of shit because that's what we do. But ultimately, these productions are pretty good. I hope we can agree on that. It's pretty cool. Texans was cool. I talked about the Cardinals. It wasn't the A broadcast team, but it wasn't bad. The gameplay was boring, but it wasn't bad. So this, listen, this will, um, this will be, that's what Club Series is. It's, it's EA, they want the, they want the teams to pay for this production. Now me, I know Nurse Street is going to do the Eagles. I believe they're going to do another, there's only four teams that have live, or five teams that have live events. So, uh, you guys can tell me we have lost teams that want to spend money on these productions. Went from it wasn't five teams last year, chat. It was at least eight, right, chat? Now you guys know better than me, but it was at least eight that had their own live event that essentially paid for their own production. You know, so this means, I mean, these teams are kind of out. Now I will tell you this: NFL owners, NFL, they're not stupid. They see what's hot. I'll tell you right now, they're in the esports. Robert Kraft is OD in the esports because esports is huge. And esports is a product that people want. Man, it might not be a product that people want. It could be. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you have to make you have to make the product that people want before you try to get them to buy it. You know, I think by by trying to get these NFL teams to put on these productions, to pay for these productions without having that A1 product first is is putting the cart before the horse. You need to have the horse pull the cart. You need to make this product. You want to make this shit so hot that they they just want to they want to do it. Like this is popping, right? This is popping. You know the podcast don't make me no damn money, none. But I hope one day that this shit is so popping that people are knocking down my door like yo, I want to sponsor the podcast. It's popping right now. You know the man community is all into it. But I know I have to do the work. I have to stay committed. I have to grind till I get to 200 episodes, till I make it something that's super popping that y'all all, all want to watch. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's my job as a content creator. And essentially, EA is the content creator of MCS. EA is the content creator of the productions. They need to make this product so good that these NFL teams don't even have to be talked into it. Like, y'all want to do that. It's popping. Right? That's how I feel. You know, that's how I feel. Uh, and I feel like the fact we've lost some teams. I know personally that Nerd Street uh, that is doing the Eagles. I don't know which other club. I, I want to say they're doing some other clubs. 
I believe they don't do it. They don't charge what you know the the other companies charge. The other, I always forget the name of the other company that used to do the production, um, in Burbank. I forget the name, but that was the company that did the Pittsburgh Steel. They did a couple of, but they charge buku money to bring out all that equipment and stream the things. Um, Jay Gas, I appreciate it, man. Uh, yeah, for sure. And, and, and Coltrane, I feel like a lot of that is. Last year we talked about this as well. We talked about we said, um, the reason they're not streaming is to try to like not give the teams any attention, really. You know what I'm saying? ESL, yeah, that's the skimbo. That's another type of company that would throw these events. Nerd Street is also that in a production company, but they Nerd Street is so they're coming up that they want to do. I want to do this for the Eagles. Let me, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a good deal. Blah say blah. You know, so they're working with, with the Eagles and they're working with everybody. As far as, if it wasn't for Nerd Street, I'll tell you this right now. The Eagles damn sure wouldn't have no club series event. I, Kev, listen, I said it earlier and I said this to Skimbo when we were talking, when we were playing today. I said, bro, I hate the club series. I hate everything. I think it sucks. I think it's, it's, it's degraded, um, the MCS. I think it's made it bad. But the fact I keep getting popped in it, I feel like I don't want to complain about it because I feel like I'm coming off as bitter. You know, I've had no success. And if I had a lot of success in the other tournaments, but I have no success in club series. So I feel like I come off as bitter when I, you know, come, when I say I don't like it or I want to complain against it. And I don't want to be like that. I don't want to come off as that person. You know what I mean? And I never want to be the person where like, because that's how I would be. Because if someone was getting popped in some shit and said they hated it, I'd be like, man, that's just because you're getting popped in it. And I don't want to come off of that. You know what I'm saying? It, club series, and I want to tell you guys, like, club series, ask because it, it, it is unorganized. But it's so goddamn hard to organize. It's so much goddamn shit. Now, we talked about this with Chewbacca. It's cool that he made it. But it was also cool when it was only 16 people and it was a big goddamn deal that he made a live event. You know, I didn't make this live event. I got popped, right? But let's be real. This live event is making the top... 128 people in a tournament, you know, you know, so for me, it's like, and this tournament, I talked about earlier in the, an hour ago, the tournament is four months long, like, what the hell type of man tournament is four months long, the game changed, the amount that the game has changed from, all right, think about salary cap from when the leaderboard started, let's think about when the leaderboard started all the way up until when the end of the tournament is going to be played, how ridiculously different the game is. Right, Chet? Right? Listen, Bobby V, Bobby v is in the chat. That's my guy. He gets my utmost uh, respect. Like, it, I got popped by a bus driver and a custodian. Yeah. But honestly, I just... It, it is really... It is really... um. It is really weird when you think about man tournament that's that damn long, you know. But like I said, there and we talk. And I know you guys have watched the podcast with Rex, and he talked about one of the goals of the MCS. One of the goals. All right, listen. And 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 Rex said this about when Stiff won, just throwing a ball up to anybody, right? They thought this was good. Why? Because anybody can play. You know what I just watched the other day, Chat. Now, I know you guys have watched this chat. Talk to me. I watched Ratatouille. Ratatouille, great movie. Front on Ratatouille if you want, chat. I give it a 10 out of 10. Ratatouille is great. Great movie. And you know what one of the slogans of Ratatouille was, chat? Everybody can cook. And one thing, if you guys, if any of you guys know Ratatouille, anybody can cook. And that's kind of... And, and, one of and, and it was by this popular like the like a popular chef right in the movie, right? And he, and the popular chef what he did was he sold out. He didn't want to just be a chef that you know made fancy. Dinner. He wanted to be corporate. He wanted to sell his shit to everybody. He wanted to blow up and he sold the bag. He sold out. And this chef's his slogan was anybody can cook because he wanted everybody buying his cookbook, right? And when EA saw stiff when EA saw stiff win, you know what I'm saying? When EA saw Stiff win with the, with the aggressive catch and Stiff, who, you know, just won, they thought the same thing. Everybody can cook. Anybody can play Madden. And they were happy as shit. And that's essentially what the club series brings 
to the, the comparative scene. Anybody can be kid. Anybody can be problem. Anybody can cook. And when you tell people anybody can cook, that makes more people want to cook. More people try to cook. But in my world, I'm a goddamn chef. I don't want you trying to cook. Take your ass and go play in the woods. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's how I feel about it. Anybody can cook. That's what EA said. And that's why they like Club Series. Because Chewbacca can cook. Because Bobby V can cook. You know what I'm saying? So Wrath God, he can cook. They want everybody cooking. I don't want nobody cooking. You know what I'm saying, chat? Coltrane, I'm telling you, anybody can cook. Now, you guys, you guys front if you want, chat. You guys front if you want. Ratatouille is a good-ass movie. YouTube, tell me Ratatouille is not a good-ass movie. You're lying. You are a liar. Ratatouille is a good-ass movie. But that, that was one of the things in the movie, Ratatouille. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can cook. There you go, Bobby. Rock the chef hat, man. All right. Let's talk about... They were very happy when Stiff won. Why can't anybody can cook? You know what I'm saying? Anybody can cook. Please, come play our game. Please, come play our game. Man, if it was up to me, it'd just be 10 of us playing the goddamn game. Keep the million dollar payout. It's 10 of us. Let's chop it up. I don't want none of y'all playing mad. I want you watching it. I don't want you just thinking you can play. I want you to watch the game and say, God damn, I'd get blown out. That's what I want. I want y'all to be like, damn, that shit looks hard. Pause. That's, but honestly, I, that shit looks, I, I can't do that. Because when I watch, honestly, when I watch streams, chat, when I watch, I, I don't watch Madden on stream. I, I, honestly, I really didn't even want to watch Club Series, but you know, it, it was interesting to me. You know, it's for the podcast. I don't watch Madden. I'll go watch Call of Duty. I'll go watch Fortnite. I'll watch Apex. And I'll say, damn, I can't do that shit. And why is it entertaining to me? Because I can't do the shit. Chat. Why do I like watching LeBron dunk on people? Because I can't do this shit. Right? And, and I'm, listen, this is just a thought that's coming to my mind now, man. The, just the entertainment of some shit I can't do is kind of entertaining to me. Am I wrong? Do you guys feel the same way? Like when I watch people play video games, I don't want to watch some shit I could do. Right? Like, I suck at every game other than Madden. Right? And I kind of suck at Madden right now, too, shit. Right? Like, this is my point. If I suck, I want to watch somebody else that plays like me. Right, shit? No, like, seriously. I want to watch somebody tough. I want to watch some tough shit. That's what I'm saying. You know, and, and, and like I said, when I watch streams, I watch the best people because they do shit I can't do. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, anybody can cook. But I don't want to watch anybody play Madden. You feel me? I'm not, dude, I'm fucking Allen Iverson on the Grizzlies. I'm not Jordan on the Wizards. But anyway, let's hurry up, man. We already an hour and 40 minutes into this podcast. Like I said, over, listen, once again, you guys know the deal, man. If we get to, t if you get still in here for an hour 30, put your cash ass below. We'll pick one of y'all. You know, I got you. I've been blessing people. You know what I'm saying? So put your cash ass, not in the chat now. Don't put your cash app in the chat. You'll get timed out. But in the YouTube, put your cash app. Or you can put your, you know what I'm saying? Or you can put your PayPal. I got that too, man. Exactly, dude, boy. I like watching Clef because I think Clef is really goddamn good. I watch K Mac. I think K Mac is really good. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to watch people, I, you know, like, I, I don't I don't know how to put it. I'm really good at Madden. I'm kind of ass now, but I'm really good, right? So I want to, like, I don't want to watch somebody else play Madden. Because, like, it ain't nothing I can't do. Like, as good as Clef is, and Clef and Henry are animals, right? Clef, Henry, came back. these dudes are tough. But it's not shit they do on the field that I can't do. Now, if I go watch Call of Duty, and I see Shroud... I see Nay Shot or even Dr. Disrespect. Ooh, it's kind of ass. But he does shit I can't do. So I'm like, damn, that's tough. Because I can't do this shit. 
It's like, I don't want to go to the Y and watch these guys play basketball. The fuck? Why am I watching Joe, Joe the Plumber play basketball? You know? I ain't upload SoundCloud? Yes, I did. I got you, though, Moogle. I got you. I think I missed a week for sure. But anyway, that's just how I feel about streams and everything. But let's talk about the DC leaderboards. Come here, chat. Um, I Skimbo has said in his chat six times or, that you can reset your draft. Let me tell you guys how I feel about DC. I love DC. Um, because this is what Draft Champions is, right? Draft Champ. I remember Man 16 when they first put in Draft Champions, right? I was running the Houston Texans playbook. It had this U trips that's in New England now. But it was better in Houston. It had a couple more plays. And I was running Houston in Man 16. And I was tough, right? Tough. You know, I'm, I was me. You know, I was just playing the game. I was, I was having fun. DC came around. Now, this Houston playbook, this shit was only in two playbooks. So I threw that out the window. So what DC forced you to do is kind of learn how to make a, kind of learn how to make an offense out of whatever they give you. And I've always thought I was better at that than a normal person. I felt being able to make an offense, make something tough, I was good at that. You know, that's one of my skills. And honestly, that's something that I enjoy a lot about Madden, chat. I'm saying that's something I really enjoy about Madden. Is that, damn, let me take this, you know, this shit-ass playbook. Let me find a formation. Let me cook up a couple motions. Uh, find a couple posts. Find a, a corner route that works. Find a, a run that's pretty good. Now, I'll be honest. They have kind of dumbed down a lot of creativity in Madden. But it's still there. And that's honestly a lot of the fun that, uh... It's a lot of fun that I have playing the game. You know what I mean, chat? Uh, for me, it's a lot of the fun to do that. And that and Buffalo Rod, you guys see the chat. He said the re I don't know what the redraft is. I didn't know that's part of the game. Um But for me, uh DC is not anyone can cook. DC is the furthest thing from anyone cook. That's my point, is this is that I was always fun finding offenses. Now, me personally, I don't like that new three three playbook shit. I know it's 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 completely um contrary to what y'all like and what I, I, I understand that it's not the popular. I'm not gonna try to change anybody's mind. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna change anybody else's mind. And I don't wanna change your mind. But me personally, I didn't like the extra playbook. Cause I thought me. My skill was making offense out of something that some people want. I feel like if I get a bad playbook, you get a bad playbook, my shit's gonna be hotter. I've always felt that way. So I never, I didn't like the three extra playbooks. I didn't, I mean, it was cool, and obviously most people are gonna like it, so I'm not gonna argue that fact. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for me, for me, uh, I did not like the extra playbooks. But now I keep hearing about this redraft. What is this redraft? Do I have to get on Draft Champions now and see what you guys are talking about? Because I, I, you guys are saying redraft, like you can just like like play a friend redraft, which would be obnoxiously bad. As I turn on my Xbox now, yes. Now I did say that it would not be a bad idea if you had like a refresh button. Nine K, I said it should be a hundred K. 9k for a redraft? Y'all do this shit all night. I'll draft all night. Now, I feel like 100k wouldn't be a bad call, chat. Because nobody's just going to spend the 100k. I don't care about the loss. You know, I feel like, and I said this before, especially for now, some of you guys are loading in and you have an old ass team. Right? Say you got an old ass team from September where you were playing the leaderboards. Now you got to play with your old ass team, right? You know, and, and for me, that sucked. And in those situations, I feel like, yes, you should be able to redraft, right? Yeah, I I feel like 9K, 9K or 6K is, is dog shit. I think that's, a, nobody would even hesitate. People would draft 10 times till they got the right playbook. Yes, I believe it should be 100K. Because the only time you should even want to do that is to go ahead and, and, and play... If you have a bad team locked in from pet. And that's the only time I said 
I, I think it should be 100K. Like, what? This is my thing to you assholes, though. Why would you do that? Because this, the whole mode, the more you play the mode, the more you prepare to get different playbooks, you know? You know, because you could do all that. Say, I could pay 6K every time. I can get the Saints playbook every time, right? Then I go into the tournament. I got to play Bazooka Larry, and now all of a sudden I have the San Fran playbook. Why would I, I, I risk that? Why would I put myself in that position to not know what I'm doing, honestly? Yeah, like, I, I honestly, I, yeah, redrafting, redraft. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not a fan of this redraft. I do think it 100K would be cool. Because let's be honest, chat, none of us spending 100K to redraft unless we had a dog shit team in there, right? Say we had the worst play, especially in leaderboards, man. Even if you lose, just reboot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think redraft for 6K is nuts. I think that's nuts. Also, now, you guys know better than me, when does this leaderboard end? The leaderboard has just started. It is November 5th or November 6th, whatever date it is right now, November 5th. Tuesday, November 5th, 8.52. When do leaderboards, when do leaderboards end, chat? That's what I'm asking. I believe this is a long haul. Like, this is a long haul. I want to say two months is what I want to say. Now, uh, Jay Bird is supposed to know all these answers. I don't know why he doesn't know this answer by now. Um, January. Yeah, That's why I heard and My man Ann Arbor said January. Yo, November to January, that's a long haul. I mean, you're only hurting yourself redrafting. I'll tell you that right now, Chet, as I go in here to, to look at this much draft shit. January 7th, that's two months. That's a long haul. Um, That's a really long haul. Um, For me, you know, and the one thing that happened is their top four. Drenny says there shouldn't be top four. And, 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 and listen, the words top four have been mentioned by me how many times, chat? I feel like every podcast I say, I've talked about top four every week. I don't know if they listen to me. I don't know. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. But there's not a single person walking this earth that doesn't want top four. Just like there's not a single person that had a problem with a 30-second play clock. But they just change shit to change shit and don't tell anybody. And Drenny, I 1,000% right, Drenny. I agree. Drenny says, oh, y'all can see it. But he said, club's in the middle of it. I can't lock in on both. And there goes the problem with club series. Club series is dog shit. It's a four-month tournament where there's two other tournaments playing in the middle of it. So, little old, little Johnny and me, they got popped in clubs. I get to play DC. Ha, 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 ha. While you assholes are still playing salary cap. When does... Okay, we said DC... Leaderboards close January 7th. When is the club final? When is the $100,000 game of Madden? Chat, let somebody answer me that because I don't know when 100 k is. Club finals, halfway through December. Actually, close to the end, December 20th. Okay, so say you're the club final champion. Now, how many, How uh, give me this, give me this answer too, chat. How many people are played at last weekend? Is it the final four or the final eight or something? All right, let's just say the fi final 16. Or is it the whole 32, right? That's my point. 32 people. Okay, so those 32 people get to play DC for two weeks. Now, listen, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, chat, is if you're a pro man player, stop, stop bitching. You know, if you can't get on and play a couple games of DC a day, you should be able to qualify. If you're good enough to win your club, you should be able to qualify for DC by playing a couple games a day or maybe five games a week until then, right? But top four, yeah, you have no chance. You have no chance to get top four if you are if you win your club. You know, and, and, and that is rough. And this goes back to how many times I tell you club series sucks. The only... All the elite Madden players will tell you they don't like they don't like. I, that's how I feel. Club series is whack, you know. Yeah, Pronto, I agree. Switching game mode shouldn't be that big a deal, but being able to qualify top four, they have no chance. You have no chance being able to qualify top four if you if you win your club. 
you know, no chance in that. Unless you go 82 and 0. I mean, you can redraft for. <laughs> I did not know you could do this. I almost just want to redraft. Retire event. Oh, you just retire and you just you just gotta pay it again. I get my nine k back. Look at this chat. What? Yeah, Colin. That's exactly why I said I don't like bitching about it. So I get my nine k back that I entered with. I even get a Hail Mary pack? Or did I win a game? I might have won a game. I, I, this might be because I won a game. I don't know, Chad. I might be wrong. I might be right. I don't know. But I think I, it might be because I won a game. All right. Let's rank draft it up. Pay my 9K that I just got back. Oh, uh, let's go. Uh, which one do I pick, Chad? I don't know which one's better, which one's worse. Attacking 4-3, base 3-4, hybrid 3-4. I think, oh, I know, I'm picking Baltimore. I'm good at Baltimore. I know Baltimore is tough. Uh, here we go here. Oh, Curtis Samuel, 91 speed. Got to pick Terry McLaurin. Okay, this is doing a draft, you know. Uh, who are we picking here? 78 speed, 74 speed, Josh McCown. We got to go flashback, Kirk Cut. Not 82 throw power, 83 throw power. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Going Dak. Uh, I'm going Adrian Amos. Am I tripping? Adrian Amos. I need somebody that can hit a little bit, run a little bit. Whitney Joe Schobert. With these dudes are just terrible cards. But I will pick Merciless because he can run a little bit. And he can pass rush a little bit. Let me go here. Who are we going to grab? We're going to go Donald Driver. Not a bad wide receiver. Oh, Shark Week is pretty much a snap pick for me. Anytime you get 90 wide receiver, you got to pick them, right, Chet? Uh, right tackle, left tackle. Got to pick Joe Staley here, for show. Sure. Now we get these guys. We got a left tackle. We got J.J. Watt. I am going to pick J.J. Watt. Who would you guys pick? Frank Clark is actually a pretty decent card. Block shed 60. I'm not feeling that. Let me get J.J. Watt. Go back to this. Who are we going with here, Chet? Dwight Franey or center. I'm going Franey. Build your line, my man Mills told me. Uh, 87 speed McCourty or do I go to 84 speed McAllister? Coleman is not an option for me. What do you guys think? Obviously, McCourty is a lot faster. His ratings are pretty decent. Uh, Chris McAllister, taller. Ratings a little bit better. But I think you got to go with the 87 speed. I'm going to pick McAllister, though, Chet. I think I'm going to pick McAllister. Three points of speed. His ratings are a little bit better. I don't know what y'all think. I'm picking McCall. Yeah, I want to see if he's glitchy. I've played with McCord. I don't know if he's good. Uh, then we get these dog shit cards. I wish you could. See. And one thing we talked about draft champions, what if you could trade rounds? Like, let me trade three draft picks for one 90 overall round or something. Would that be tough? Fitzgerald, Mark. Yeah, let me pick a right tackle. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I mean, I, I'm. Listen, can I try a card? A lot of this is just trying. Got pick Slay. A lot of this for me is just let me try this card. Maybe he's tough. Maybe he's glitchy. I mean, these cards are just godly. I'm pick. I'm pick Jerry Cook. Put him a tight end. Ah oh, damn. Uh, running back. Whew, veteran Adrian, Adrian Peterson. Where my CFM guys at? Definitely picking AP. Uh golly. Michael Thomas. This base Michael Thomas was kind of tough for him. I'm gonna pick Michael Thomas. Evans is yeah, Evans is pretty tough. Michael Thomas probably gets a little more busy. Uh, here we go with this. Uh, who linebackers are pretty ass. Got some pass rushers. I got three pass rushers. I'm gonna pick Tremaine Edwards. Play middle linebacker. Uh, golly. I'm gonna pick right guard Sheriff. He's a ninety. Uh. Danny Shelton, that's a fat guy, dude. Sometimes you just need some real fat guys. I think we gotta pick uh to it though. To it, or do we pick uh Cameron Hayward? 88 strength, 86 strength, 70 speed, six. Oh, they're the same damn card. Give me to it. Just cause he's higher overall. Next pick. Oh, we got Seahorn. Can I pick Seahorn or Khalil Mack? Let me pick Seahorn. McAllister can wind up playing safety. Ooh, okay. I like this round. 
Gotta pick AJ, right? I got McLaurin, Michael Thomas. Oh, I have four wide receivers already, but this AJ looks tough. Or Yonda. I don't want to pick a lineman. Maybe I'll pick Noah Fant. I can run some two tight end sets with Jared Cook and Noah Fant. That's pretty solid. Tough to pick. That card art's tough, though. It's tough for me to go with AJ Green. Uh, I don't want to pick another lineman. I'm going to pick Noah Fant. Just to say I do the two tight end stuff, mix that up. Next round for me, chat, where do you go here? Do you go with LT or do you go with Dawkins? I'm leaning Dawk. I have J.J. Watt, Freeney, Merciless. I don't want to play Mike Evans. <laughs> I vote redraft. My 9K. All right, let's see what happens. All right, I take him. Next playbook, who do I get? I get Green Bay. All right, I'll pick Green Bay because I have tight offset. No, I'm going to redraft. Zero wins. And I get 6K back. So this cost me, I paid 9K to get in. And it gives me a Hail Mary pack. And I get a 75 Jermaine Grace that I want to quick sell. So you cost you 3K. It costs you 3K. That's what it costs to redraft. 3,000 coins. Try it. It costs 3,000 coins to redraft. 3,000. Oh, oh, now I'm going to pick Green Bay. There we go. That is nuts. 3,000 coins to redraft. Trey Flowers is a 989 overall. Redraft, 100. I'm going 100K. Y'all uh, y'all pick uh, my man Gilmore here with his 82 speed. Marquise Brown. Shark or Marquise Brown? Ted Guinness shit. Uh, I'm going Shark Week, man. 6'4", 90 speed, or 5'8", 91 speed. I'm going Shark Week. Right here, going Frank Clark. I love drafting, man. It's fun. Right here, I think you got to go Deion Jones. Not that he's the best. Denzel Ward. Got to pick him. You can get 92 speed. You got to get him out there. Gene Upshaw. You got to pick Khalil Mack. I'm not picking a guard over Khalil Mack. Uh, I will pick Trent Williams, though. Put him in left tackle. Don't need those fat guys. Uh, I will pick, I think I believe I will pick 80. F Wagner's not there. 83? I'll just pick Wagner. These dudes are all the same. Just pick where Wagner because he's a right tackle. Uh, let me pick, I will pick Larry Little here. I mean, they want me to run the ball, huh, Chet? Lockett, got to pick Lockett. Oh, Monte Nicholson's a possibility. Nah, not really. I got Shark already. I have, uh, no, I'll pick Lockett. Lockett's a snap pick. Who we pick here at Renfro, right? Ooh, Bradbury got 89? <sighs> Y'all know I kind of want to pick Renfro. I ain't never played with Renfro. But Bradbury's always a glitch in Madden. Got to pick with Bradbury. Burns has 84 speed. Tony Pollard. I always pick Adrian Peterson, man. He's a beast. Let's get it. Forget Tony Pollard. Uh, next pick, we have Brandon Marshall, Demarcus Robinson, or I will never pick Brandon Cooks. He's a bitch. Pick Robinson. We got some fast receivers. And we come in here with, oh, I got to pick Kittle for tight end. Difference maker chat. Ooh, Mariota. Now, all these quarterbacks will be the same speed. That's what you have to realize, chat. Mariota has 85 speed, but he will be the same speed as Ben Roethlisberger because he doesn't have an ability. But I'm going to pick Mariota just because maybe I'll use that speed somehow. Uh, next pick, Darnell Savage, 88 speed. Got to be the pick. Um, I like this team a little bit right now. We got tight ends again. Is there a tight end round? Kittle and Noah Fant, that's a nice little one-two punch. So Darius Smith is... Ooh. <laughs> Who do you pick here, chat? I can feel you got to pick this dude. This is Darius Smith, right? I have Mac. Is all I, I got Mac, Trey Flowers, and Frank Clark. I have three rushers already. The fact, like, I got to pick. Seriously, chat. This is a tough pick. Is this not a tough pick for anybody else? I feel like you got to pick a 90 speed safety, right? I, mean, I have some pass rushers. This, I feel like this is a tough pick. My man TK with the gift of subs. Another tight end. 
Antoine Randall L. I don't need you. Don't really need a left tackle, but I, I'm picking a left tackle. He'll play like left left guard or something. Uh, this pick right here. Who is the pick? I have a. I think Jim Brown is the pick. We got two tight ends. We have four offensive linemen. Chat. I don't. John Rant, Alan Page got a chance, but let's be real here, Chet. We're going to grab Jim Brown. Jim Brown. Yeah, we're getting Jim Brown here. Now, I could pen 3K, although I already got my book. I have Green Bay, so. There it is. But if I don't like this team, 3K is a, a disgrace. It's a disgrace. Nah, I'm getting Jim Brown. I'm pound, I got Jim Brown, Adrian Pierre. Panda, what's up, man? But anyway, let's go back to the pod. That's just what I'm saying with these drafts is pretty nuts that uh, we can go out here and uh, redraft that easily. Uh, I, I think the redraft is a good thing, but it should be 100K. You know, that way I'm not, I got 800K. I'm not paying 100K to redraft. I'm just play. It's pretty nuts, man. Especially let's think about like the last day when people are trying to qualify. God forbid there is a top four. How dumb would this shit be? Complete, completely removes the whole draft champions part of it. You know, um, and if you're doing this, you are doing yourself an injustice to become better at the game. I'll tell you that right now, honestly. But uh, I'm excited about it. Hopefully they announce top four. The longer they wait, the, the worse it is. If they're going to do top four, it's got to be said right now, man. You know, um, but the fact they haven't is letting me down. But that's the DC. Let's talk about I'm, I'm almost two hours in the show, but let's talk about Twitter, man, because Twitter's getting kind of goddamn wild lately, chat. Hey, Twitter's getting nuts because this is how I feel about Twitter. And the main people, you know what I'm saying? Everybody, this is how mad players are on Twitter. One, because EA, at, EA uses Twitter. It is the place that we complain about the game, so we see that we hope they see it. It is a public forum for us to complain about the game. Right, chat? Right? It is, it is our public forum. You know? And and let's not... When people are talking about the game and they're putting the two cents in the game in the public air, it is completely for their benefit. No matter who it is. My man Stealth Condom. YouTube, you guys see that. Every t Stealth Condom is a hell username. Let's rewind a little bit and see how hell the name Stealth Condom is. Hell username. Great rebrand. Great name, Stealth Condom. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know what's going on with your accept the client penalty. I really don't. But anyway, I feel like Twitter is a public forum for us to complain about the game. Uh, because one, you have other people to talk about. You have other people that comment. Uh, and the people that make the game see these comments. you know. But let's not confuse that. Nobody gives a shit what's best for the game. Everybody just gives a shit what makes it easier for them and harder for their opponent. That, that's what it is. You know, and, 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 and the main people that, between Joke and Mo, that, that's just talking about Madden. You know, if they use some shit, they're not going to comment about it. But if they don't want somebody else to use some shit, they're going to say it's broken. You know, that's how I pretty much, and that's how pretty much everybody uses Twitter. You know what I'm saying? No matter who it is. You know, that's pretty much how it's been used now. It's like, okay, if I don't use some shit, if I use some shit, I'm not going to complain about it. You know what I'm saying? But if, if, you know, if it's killing me and I'm having trouble stopping it, I'm going to tell y'all how broken it is. You know what I'm saying? A person that, that's just how I feel. That's how it has become. That how every time I log on, that's pretty much what I see. Is somebody trying to change the game or trying to get something fixed, that helps them and hurts somebody else. You know, and that's pretty much uh what I think it's become. You know, and I don't think any I, I don't think anybody really has, you know, the greatest interest in the game. Um and at the same time I do agree with a lot of shit, a lot of shit that people say. For instance, we talked about this today is that the new Tyreek Hill dropped. It is 50 cap and he's the fastest player in the game. You know, and and, and we talked about side cap on here a lot is that, you know, defensive players should have lower cap. 
because there's 11 of them. There's only like four or five people on offense, and you could tank two of them. So if you only have three people on offense, but you need 11 people on defense, I've always thought defensive players' caps should be lower. You know, and that's something I've talked about a lot, and I've said a lot, man. You know? See, I don't think... See, Blackout said people gotta watch their mouth. Uh... I don't think anybody says anything disrespectful, though. At least the people I follow. I don't know who the hell y'all follow. I'm just talking about people that talk about... We're just talking about, talking about Madden right now. Um, Tyreek Hill should be the fastest. I don't think he should be four-speed faster than somebody. I, you know, I think that's a little much. You know, fellas. But I just don't... I, I don't want you guys confused. People ultimately just do... Just talk about what's good for them. You know, and, and probably myself included, you know. If I use escape artist, man, I don't think it's really not OP. I don't think escape artist, I don't think escape artist is no different than Michael Vick in the past Madden's. Like last year, between Michael Vick and Lamar Jackson, I don't think it's that big a difference. Chat, you guys tell me. I mean, I don't know. Ultimately, I just think I think that defensive players should be cheaper cap. You know, I really do. I don't think anybody would have a problem. If we cut every defensive player cap in half, who would have a problem? Like, seriously. Like, if, 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 if Dawkins was now 28 cap, who would care? Who would complain? Chat, that's my question to you guys. Right? Like, what is the downside? If everybody had Lawrence Taylor, everybody had Clowney, everybody, what, what's the downside to that? People couldn't move the ball? You know? People couldn't run? So I always thought, not half the cap, but say Brian Dawkins is 50 cap. Maybe he should be 38. You know, let's just, you know. I don't know. I don't know, Chad. We, I, side cap isn't the answer. I'm just pretty much just talking about Twitter. But people just pretty much, just it's just getting fucking, it's getting outrageous. Logging on, just air, everybody. And, and, and the biggest thing for me was this weekend was escape artists, man. I was just told how broken this shit was, and I watched I watched Volt bag it, then I watched Jay Mills, I watched Andrew Luck didn't do no wild shit for Joe Wright. It was nothing that I, it was nothing that we haven't seen in Madden's past, you know. And, and you know, for me, it, 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 I didn't think it was OP, and I thought I think people, if that's their argument, if that's their argument, right? Chet, that's I'm on this side of the fence, and I'm gonna do everything I can. To make you to say I'm right, I'm saying I'm gonna look for every play and every instance where I'm right, you know, and that, that's pretty much what it is, man. Uh, escape artists isn't. I, there's other things wrong with the game that make escape artists worse. The same as it's been, the same as a mobile quarterback has been last year, the year before, all that. EA told us they're gonna stop the mobile quarterback, and what happened was. Bang, it just got worse. Not only, they didn't stop it, they just made us pay for it and put ability on them, honestly. You know, chat. Yeah, did Chewbacca have escape artists? And this is what they'll say. Whoever argues against escape artists, because, and the only people to argue about it, they don't have escape artists. All they'll say is, oh, Chewbacca's not good, or k Max not good, he didn't look to scramble. They didn't use it right. So, but when Joe Rice was out there getting hawked by Shazier and getting sacked, he was using it right. You know what I'm saying? Escape artists is not shit. No. Y'all don't remember. Y'all don't remember Lamar Jackson and Michael Vick last year. Y'all really don't remember. Y'all don't remember Lamar Jackson. It's so quick that they forget about Lamar Jackson and Michael Vick last year. They really do. You know, but that's all. Honestly, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Really, that's all. What? Just y'all know that people just comment on shit. They they want it to be harder for their opponent and easier for them, man. And, you know. Yeah, if you want to lurk, you gotta get lurker. That's how it is. But listen, we up over two hours, Chad. Man, y'all been rocking over four hundred people in here. The podcast is popping. Listen, I'm not telling the NFL team to pick up the podcast. I'm not. I'm gonna make it hot. It's gonna be popping enough. Which y'all support? Listen, when it gets this popping, because y'all support it, then you know one day NFL team might sponsor the podcast. I'm not gonna be like EA. I'm not gonna knock on the NFL team and say, "Please sponsor this." It's gonna be hot, 
And when they say no, I don't stream it. You know, that's not what I want to do. I'm going to make this shit hot thanks to y'all, really, honestly, man. But I do appreciate y'all coming by, man. This was Denise. This was episode 50. What is this? 54? 54? Said it? Yeah, that's part of Twitter, man. Uh, episode 54. This is episode 54. Glad y'all came by, man. Let me know if y'all like the chat on the podcast. It was something that was brought to me by my buddy Barley You Up. He said, yo, listen, I'm, I'm watching the podcast. I can't keep a, I can't keep track of who you're talking to. I put the chat up on so y'all can read it. Let me know, man, if y'all need, you know, if y'all can read it, if it's cool, if y'all like that, if we're taking this to the next level, man, because I want y'all to interact. The biggest thing about this show is that I want y'all to interact. I want y'all to be a part of it because without y'all, this shit don't grow. That's all I'm saying. And I appreciate y'all support. So let me know if you like like the the text right here. Where is it? Right here. I'm saying all this right here. People talking, man. Make sure you guys, if you guys like it, let me know. If not, let me know. I need y'all help. I cannot do this alone.